In this video on C Sharp Basics, we'll be taking a look at the for each loop. Now the for each loop loops through items within a collection or array. The for each loop uses a variable to reference the item that's currently inspected by the loop. Then it performs the commands within the for each scope once for each item within the collection. And finally, you're not going to be able to add or remove items to the collection as part of the commands within the scope. This would in fact cause a compiler error. So let's take a look at the syntax of the for each loop. First, we need to start off with some sort of array or collection. In this case, we're declaring an array of the Fibonacci sequence. Once you have your collection, you can go ahead and use the for each loop. You'll notice within the parentheses of the for each statement, we're declaring a variable called int number. You need to declare your variable with the data type that's going to correspond with the different individual values you expect from your collection or array. Since the Fibonacci array is a sequence of integers, we're going to give our number variable a type of int. Then you use the keyword of in followed by the name of the collection or array. In this case, it's the Fibonacci array. After your declaration, you want to put your curly braces to indicate the scope of the for each loop. Then of course, within the scope of your for each loop, you want to write out the commands that you wish to execute once for each item within the collection. For each item within the Fibonacci array, the item will be assigned to the variable number. Then we can use that variable of number one time for each time that we go through the loop. So this should write to our console each number within the Fibonacci array. So in order to use the for each loop, you need some sort of collection or array of items that you want to iterate through. Let's go ahead and declare an array and we're going to make it a string array and we'll call it names. Let's set its initial value here. So we're going to do new uh, string array. Let's just do five values and those five values are going to be, let's go with uh, Sam, and Tony, and then uh, Joy, and hmm, what else? Let's go with Joe, and then let's go with Sandra. There we go. And then put our semicolon at the end of our array, and there we go. Now that we have our array, let's go ahead and declare our for each statement, and put some parentheses after our for each statement. And inside these parentheses, we need to declare some sort of variable. Now that variable data type has to match the same data type that we have here in our array. So that's going to be a string variable. Now this variable is going to represent each individual item within the array. So the first time through, it's going to be Sam. The second time through, it's going to be Tony. The third time through, it's going to be Joy, and so on and so forth. Now, since each individual item is a name, probably a good name for this variable is name. Then after the declaration of our variable, we need to use the in keyword followed by the name of the collection that we want to iterate through. So we'll do names. So after we've typed out our for each statement, we can go ahead and declare its scope with a couple of curly braces. Now within the for each scope, we need to put the commands that we wish to execute for each iteration through the names array. Let's go ahead and do console dot right line and we'll just output the name so we'll do name then after our for each scope let's go ahead and do a console dot read line that way our console window waits for us to type something in the command window uh, before it moves on i'm going to go ahead and set a breakpoint here on our for each loop and then hit the start button so that we can debug our code so here we are paused on our for each loop, and I'm just gonna expand and show you that the names array does in fact have all five of our different names in it. Now we can go ahead and uh, step through the code by hitting the F11 key, and we'll see that we first get the collection of names. Then we hit the in keyword, and now you'll see that the string name variable is being referenced. As of right now, there is no current value for the name variable, but when I hit F11 to go past that point, you'll see that the first value is Sam, 
gets assigned to that name variable. Then if I continue stepping through the code, do our console.write line, and if we check our console window, sure enough, there is the, the value of Sam. We can go ahead and continue this process by hitting the F11 key a few more times, right to the console window, and you can see each time it's iterating through and assigning a value to that name variable. So now we're on Joe, right? So that's the fourth value inside of our array. And if we continue on our console.read line, there we go. And now we can see each one of the names is listed in our console window. That's how you use a for each loop. The for each loop is a much more important concept to understand once we start dealing with collections of objects and lists of objects. Now we haven't talked about objects just yet. Just understand that this for each control flow mechanism makes your life a lot easier when you have a certain set number of different items inside of a collection. You don't have to worry about infinite loops because it's always going to stop at the very last one. And you can see syntactically, it's very simple and makes things easy for you to use.